I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really funny and really awesome game with the Druid versus Defense and Clan Battles, and it's just something you got to see. But before we begin, if you guys see value in the channel, like, subscribe, bell button, I'll appreciate all the support of 2,000 subs. Almost there. Doing a free premium DD giveaway, and I hope you enjoy it, and thank you guys for supporting the community. It's been great. So let's get to it. I am in the Druid this time on Clan Battles. Now, a lot of people have been kind of controversial saying, hey, maybe the Druid's not the best for Clan Battles. I beg to differ. Probably just, it's not about the ship you pick, it's how you play it, and also about the teamwork that you actually uh, fuse with it, encapsulate the powers and strengths of each team member, and I believe that's really the key ingredient to making successful strategies work. So let's take a look how this strategy actually works, and again, I'm working right now. Um, I've been working around a lot, playing with a lot of Storm, Typhoon, Hurricane guys, and just seeing different types of strategies, tips, tactics. I'm always there to learn and, and I bring that value to everybody so we can all grow and learn together because why? This is a friendly game. It's fun. You don't really get much out of it other than in pure enjoyment. And that's the first uh, thing you should think about these games is it's enjoyment. You're having a good time. You're having a good time socializing with friends, making new friends, and just having a blast about learning something new, right? So let's talk about the strategy right here. We have the normal seven versus seven right here. I'm in the Druid on the eastern side. This is Mass Shatter. The reason why this is an interesting map because it has a big chain of islands in the middle here that allows you to go in multiple different directions, multiple different strategies. So this is a unique one we're going to try right here. First strategy is we'll have one destroyer go to alpha cap and cap and kind of contest and make it a uh, kind of a de decoy that I've always talked about. And normally the enemy team is kind of a similar makeup in that regard now but the difference being is instead of actually focusing on alpha we're going to do a bravo charlie push this is called by the uh, team i was playing with not by me and so first thing i would do as a destroyer player is cap bravo and then proceed all the way to the eastern side to spot once i find the coast is clear then push south and then immediately engage any kind of destroyer here and take their flank allowing us to push right through the other two or four all four cruisers and battleships will actually proceed with me as well one cruiser is going to go behind this island and follow me to provide radar support and preferably another radar cruiser another radar cruiser will go in and tow as a support wingman another cruiser will then wake its way since he's the furthest he doesn't have to go all the way to the east he actually go down the middle of the chain as well as the other cruiser will then go in the rear of bravo to support and hold and guard bravo and then the battleship will then go straight down the middle and proceed to charlie cap and flank that way that way we're using every single lane possible to take over Charlie. The, what is the biggest threat? Well, the biggest threat is going to be a shot broadside into the center here. Anybody going to the center is going to have a clean broad shot in. That's why you have to use expedition as well as you know, moving in mass because then it becomes a little bit more challenging to shoot, you know, multiple players in front of you. Most human players see a lot of things in front of them like to shoot. So that's the kind of idea we're going to do. So how would this actually look like? So then we would move uh, your cruisers. This is what it would look like once it's uh, done. Um, oh man, let me, uh, let me push the arrows out of here so you can see. So this is what it would actually turn out to look like. You have the me as a destroyer on the flanks, a cruiser and support. It would look like this position here with this cruiser in the center, this cruiser guarding Bravo and the channel in, as well as the battleship pushing forward. Destroyer will proceed here. What we're thinking is going to happen is one of their cruisers will contest at Alpha with the uh, destroyer. Their the cruisers and battleships will probably flank out to here. Meanwhile, their uh, destroyer and maybe a couple cruisers will proceed to cap or maybe flank us this way. While they're being engaged, we have a superior number advantage. Obviously, you can see right there, just by having sheer numbers, we uh, are able to eliminate one destroyer right there. And then obviously, focus fields of fire will eliminate these both the cruisers. Therefore, we then have a ship lead advantage. While they contest A, they're going to have to race around and try to cap Bravo. Uh, their idea is probably going to overrush since they have a numbers advantage alpha. They'll either have to swing to the north, swing to the middle, and all while we continue pushing in, we're going to continue the push into alpha and then focus fire into the center there. So that's the idea is overwhelming the entire area from Bravo to Charlie, easier to defend Bravo Charlie from the center here, and they have to do the long trek all around. So that's kind of how the map works, but you're going to actually see a really interesting development uh, play, we have to actually uh, over adapt, adjust, adapt, and overcome because we're probably going to get flanked somehow in the Bravo, and we have to go back to defend it. You're going to see that's why the title of the video is Druid in Defense. Druid versus defense because I actually have to take the destroyer and proceed all the way back to the north and then guard Bravo at the same time. And even though I'm a slow destroyer, you know, slow and steady still wins the day. So let's take a look at it and how it goes. 
All right, team, here we are in the Druid, and I'm going to speed up the video a little bit because there's really not much that happens right off the beginning. But as you can see, and look at the mini-map, and you can see as we go in the background here, we're getting into position. We've got the battleship going down the center. we got two cruisers following the battleship but going down the center of the islands and splitting it. While we have the two cruisers supporting me going down the eastern flank. And as you can see, right off the bat, we have uh, the Des Moines running away. So he's kiting away, and then we have a smoke cloud in front of us knowing that the Shimakaze or Destroy, whatever that may be uh or summers that is is uh, laying a smoke screen and they're both in retreat proud of that sometimes i hate this part of the game that uh, people just running back the back of the map and this is not really conducive to brawling but anyways we're just basically chasing chasing off the summers and des moines off the map meanwhile we've seen bravo being capped by the the shimakaze so we're gonna have to run back and again the druid is very very slow Running back, I'm telling my teammate in the Puerto Rico, hey, hold out as long as you can. I'm going to help you take out the Shima if you can ho hopefully take out the defense. And you can see how the, it kind of developed here. We have to adjust and recover from the, some of the uh, team, uh, the enemy teams overwhelming our caps and uh, taking our flanks, and we're losing ships faster than they are. So we're going to have to adjust, and I have to go back and you know go back back up the Puerto Rico and get the Shimakaze out of the game. And right now we're going to go head to head with Shimakaze right here, and this is the bread and butter of the Druid because our front two guns are in front of us, and now we got these improved pen angles. Obviously they're not going to they're going to ricochet off the nose, so we're going to aim at superstructure or his main battery guns and take out as much as we can. Meanwhile, I know he, if he's nose in, he can't use his torpedoes, and all he has is a front deck gun. I know we've got this thing in the bag right here, so we're going to go ahead and blast him right in the face and see, can we get him before he rams us? And boom, splash one, here he goes down. And now it's just me and the defense because our Puerto Rico gets torpedoed by the defense, and this is where the action really gets interesting here. I didn't know if this was going to be possible or not. We're going to have to go in and take on the defense and Bravo Cap ourselves Meanwhile, our uh, friendlies will actually have to go on the hunt and eliminate the rest of the players if we ever want to have a chance. Enemy team's makeup is right now is the two destroyers with two defenses left over. We have our two cruisers left, the Stalingrad and the Conde, very powerful cruisers, as well as me, the Druid, a powerful destroyer. So let's take a look at that. I was analyzing, do I flank? The defense from the right or the left and i found out that he is literally just right off the nose and i thought he was going to go forward so we had to make a command decision here say so, you know what we're going to have to go head on and go slim profile minimize damage as best we can he's firing already he may have a long reload time but you know what we're going to have to do this with sheer speed so we're going to aim at his bow bow being one of the weakest parts of the ship especially for these improved pen angles from the druid look it up it's about 75 78 degrees so we're getting look at that nice damage right 1200 some it's still damage right a thousand fourteen hundred very nice damage and here we go we're gonna go ahead and rush now the the purpose of me rushing is i need to get underneath his gun so you notice his guns are having a hard time shooting lower and lower the closer we get so this is a literally knife fight see the closer in we get it's harder for him to get his guns to bear and he's got torpedoes so we're gonna always have to keep uh, maneuvering in order to avoid them right there's his front launch torpedoes right there we go right off to the left of it and now we're going in knife fighting and going against his main bite right here. He's got that super heal, but you know what? It does not matter. We're going to keep chipping away a thousand damage every couple seconds here. And he is literally gone. He takes out our gun. Now, that is another bad part about the Druid. It loses the gun. It loses 50% of the power. But you know what? Never, ever quit. Keep on pushing. Keep that mouse button down. And we're just going to keep going in and see what is he going to do in this situation here. He can't shoot his third turret right there because he's being blocked for the front two turrets. We're going to go move in as close as we can. So out of his torpedo range, out of his guns. And literally, we're just shooting right into Super Shark. We get our main gun back, and boom, he goes down. And we are superior and victorious in that engagement. Wow, we were sweating bullets right there, ladies and gentlemen. And that was incredible right there. But unfortunately, it looks like the enemy team, although we may have capped this point, they may have to take the cake here because uh, I'll speed up the video and show you that. You know what? I made a mistake when I pushed back in, and I'll show you why in a minute here. Let's speed it up. So we're pushing in to cap or guard Charlie because I think that's where the Summers is going to go. Um, our buddy, I think, hopefully, hopefully Stalingrad can eliminate the defense, and I think he does. Lucky shot right there saves us, and we get spotted. Now, mistake on my part. Knowing that we were going to take all the points and their points have stopped, I should have just stopped in the cap and smoked up right here. Unfortunately, I made a bad decision. I tried to rush thinking I can outgun the Summers. It was the heat of the moment. Couldn't make a decision fast enough. I still had a smoke. He takes us out. And unfortunately, this does not save us from the game. You'll be surprised. And I'll speed it up to show what we think we have it, right? With two casts versus one. But take a look what happens. 
Time's ticking up. Time's ticking up. We are so close. Do we? We thought we passed for 950. Would have been enough. And oh, so close. So close. Can we get it? And we lose by literally a second. Holy cow. Look at that score, ladies and gentlemen. Nine, nine, triple nines all together. And the enemy team takes the cake. But you know what? It was a valiant effort. Good job on their team. Good job to the Summers. We made a mistake. I should have slowed down, smoked up, and just stopped the cap from uh, going up. Uh, the lesson learned for me, and again, we're all about learning good lessons here. So if you ever see that situation again, as long as the points have stopped, just go ahead and stop the point ticking up. It takes time for them to cap anyways. You could, I should have just stopped, smoked up, and just gone uh, hidden and waited for them to take. But anyways, the build will be at the end of the screen. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was really exhilarating for me, and I really enjoyed it. But hope you guys are doing well as always. Stay safe, and see you soon. Cheers.